Send me back. Good evening and welcome to our school committee meeting for this <laughs> Wednesday, October 16, 2019. It is 7 o'clock and I'd like to call our meeting to order. If we could all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, tonight we have our student representative from the high school, Mr. Will Champagne. Keeping that family history going, man. Thanks. <laughs> it's a full day. You can always count on the Champagne family. The Champagnes are here. Thanks. Well, how are you? Good. How are you? Good. Thanks. Good. Um, so this weekend on October 19th is homecoming, and there's the pep rally and a dance. I think it's 6:30 to 9:30. And um, this Friday, there's a celebration graduation spaghetti dinner. Uh, National Honor Society induction is next Wednesday on October 23rd. Um, on October 24th, next Thursday, is the Haunted Hallways, and it's hosted by a student council here at the high school. Um, next Friday, on October 25th, there's a pink out volleyball game, and it benefits breast cancer uh, research. Uh, the last week of October is driver's ed class at DHS, and the morning of Halloween is a senior Halloween parade, and so yeah, that's what's going on. It's Always cool. a crowd favorite. Yeah, the where's the Halloween parade? Go through the other schools? Is that they go through yeah. the three, okay. sc three yeah. schools? Actually, two schools. Did we go? I don't Elementary think we go through the middle school, right? Or did we do this last year? Last year. Yeah. I can't remember if we did. Or we didn't. Did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and today was PSAT day. Yeah, it was. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah, so, um, you which, took them this morning, didn't you? Yeah, so like all the sophomores take it, and then juniors who wanted to sign up for it took it. Good Piece of work. cake it was easy. It wasn't too bad. Breeze. Oh, yeah. Breeze. Good. And homecoming is, is this weekend, so you got the yep. big dance. So the dance is on, actually on Saturday or Friday? It's on Saturday. On Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Always yeah. mm -hmm. oh, a highlight, and um, we're hoping that we get, we're going to get a frost like yeah, mosquitoes want soon. <laughs> Because we would, we do want to get the um, if if we can we would like to have the pink out game be at night, much more in the way of donations it would happen rather than having to play it in the afternoon. Yeah. Yep. So uh, and we really can't push it back because you'd be running into um, tournament season. So yep. um, so hopefully we'll get a killing frost get um, next Saturday or this Saturday or Early. Sunday or maybe Monday and. We will have the triple E situation resolved, and then we can have our game at night. But until that time, it's a problem. Any questions for Will? Okay. Thank you, Will. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next up, we have our public comment and communication section. Um, the school committee welcomes public comment on items that are within the scope of the school committee's responsibilities, uh, but not on our agenda this evening. Anyone here for public comment? Would you like to come up? Could you just introduce yourself for the folks at home, please? Of course. Um, Leslie Brown, Depot Street. Um, one is a question and one's a comment. Um, the question is, it's, I understand that our exercise room, which is part of the physical education program, doesn't have any of the equipment in it now? That the, the aerobic equipment, yeah. So the two treadmills and the two uh, ellipticals um, when they came out to serve them again this year, they, they were declared that they had no more life left to them. As you know, they get used all the time, and, and the fact that we got 15 years out of them was, was pretty good. But they are at this point, because they were in such difficult shape, they actually mandated that we had to take them out of there because if anybody used them, it would be, be a liability issue there. Right, so, so I'm just, where it's a classroom and with winter coming, I hope there's um, a plan to get, I know it's, the, the, it's part of the curriculum for the physical education, so I'm hoping there's a, yeah. so yeah. want, a way to get that. I can thing. speak to that, yeah. So we are looking to and trying to find some way to uh, at least get one of each, a treadmill and an elliptical if we can. Um, I believe the total for replacing was sixteen or eighteen thousand dollars, somewhere in that ballpark. Each or for total, total. 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 Okay. For, for the four, four pieces. pieces. For all four, okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
Right. Which costs money too. Right. Okay. So, um, so it, it was unanticipated. Obviously, in the first week of uh, the school year, they they get declared um, post mortem. So, um, trying to find a way, figure out a way to um, cobble together some funding to replace at least two pieces, if we can. We have reached out as you're aware, to some, some groups to see if we can. Um, Ms. Keegan and I have looked at, you know, is there some, if there were if there were a few less other items that we'll be talking about in a little while that weren't showing their face also, we would, we would probably be able to try to find a way to uh, cobble together some of the money to at least get a treadmill in, a, in a, an elliptical, which I believe would be about eight or nine thousand dollars total for the two, the two pieces, if we could. Yeah, I just hope it's, it's, being looked at the same oh, it's, it's as on if, my board but I mean the same as if a piece of equipment in the chemistry lab right. was broken where it's um, and I don't know if we've gotten the co company open fund yet um, I guess I found out last night I know the booster sponsors right uh, so something and I'm not sure where those funds yeah I got my understanding they don't go to boosters even though boosters pays the sponsorship yeah so I don't know how that, if that right. money is. So I did get a phone call from, from the people at Blissful Meadows. Uh, tentatively, it's scheduled for the 24th of the month. And if uh, they said how much? I, I haven't heard yeah. a word. Okay. Yeah. Mark uh, called me yesterday. All right. And then my comment is, um, we went through the stuff happening this weekend. Um, boosters are also sponsoring the Tiger Trail Trot on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Um, there's a 5K trail race. There's also one mile for kids 12 and under. Registration starts at 8:45. It's $25 for the 5K, $10 for the kids race. Um, I've also decided if somebody doesn't think they do, do 5K, it's two laps. So if two yeah, people yeah, want to do it and game. do it as a relay, <laughs> um, but we're, I think it's the first year we're going to have good weather. Um, so we well, really like yeah. to see. <laughs> well, let, let, if I could jump in on that piece. Um, so you said they're going to use the trail, mm -hmm. and. My understanding is we get, we're going to get monsoons tonight. Yep. And as you know, monsoons in the trail <laughs> doesn't go well. So we may need to um, have uh, Jeff and, and, and his crew maybe go out and take a look at the trail on today's Wednesday, on Friday morning, to make sure that we don't have any, any significant washouts. It'll be nice because the brook will, really be, will probably be, really be flowing, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which, which when you're out there, that really makes that trail really nice is when the brook is really going and so forth. But uh, we will have, we'll have the leaves blown off it too, so. That's the other thing, every, all the leaves are gonna come down too, right? We blow that in the morning just yeah. before the race. That's a good point. Um, um, what time again, Leslie? Um, the race starts at, the 5K starts at 10, kids race starts around 10.30, and registration starts at 8.45. Um, or you can go online too. It's on runreg.com. Online, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Big things. Big things. Um, and there I, is hundred dollar prize money for the top female and top male in the oh, race. Great. And this is third year. Fourth year. Fourth, Fourth year. year. I lost a year somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you Leslie. Thanks, Leslie. Thanks. Okay. Um, next on our agenda is old business. Any old business anyone would like to address this evening? Okay, any new business on our agenda that anyone feels we need to address this evening? Okay. Um, with that, we'll turn it over to our superintendent's report, Mr. Maines. Could I, if, could I, if you don't have any objection, there's only three items, but I'm going to yeah. just flip-flop uh, and leave the initial planning as the last item sure. to talk about. So the first one I want to talk about is a issue um, at the middle school, which, unbeknownst to, to us for quite a period of time, has been an issue since the renovation. And that is that one of the domestic hot water tanks um, was never properly wired and never properly, never actually worked. And as a result, it had some standing water, it had some rust, and it has been, it needs to be replaced. Uh, another example of these two buildings and the unanticipated, much like I was just trying to say to Leslie, the unanticipated expenses that we keep hitting, get, getting hit with. This is another one in a renovated building where it just, the, it was never properly wired, never used effectively, and it has rendered us, and we've actually operated the middle school for, when, when was the renovation done? Well, four, four years? years. Yeah, four five, years now four years, yeah. with one hot water tank, and obviously if anything were to happen to that, we now realize that we'd have to shut down school because we'd have no hot water in the building. So this is something that we've had to look into. Um, as you know, we, we had a scurry to get the um, 
grease tank situation resolved before the start of the school year. That was a, a hit. This is another hit, um, which the estimated price is $16,000 that we need to get replaced, and we need to get replaced sooner rather than later uh, in order to create a sense of ease with the fact that the building would have at least two hot water tanks and, and be able to operate. Um, I don't know, do you want to speak a little bit about how we somehow are going to try to figure out how to pay for all of this and, and so forth? So as Mr. Main said, I mean, we, we, I think we all feel that we're putting ourselves at risk if one of them did go. So we really don't feel like we can wait for it to go on capital plan or waiting for next year. So it is 16,000. Um, as you know, uh, you know, budgetarily, you know, so we did speak with um, Mr. Wojcik. I know right. Kevin had had um, yep. Mr. Main's had a conversation. I was talking to Gene as well and kind of going back and forth. So. Um, and I actually came up with the idea of possibly a, a reserve fund transfer. But to be honest with you, because um, I just being on the town side for so many years, I, I get it from a finance committee point of view and all that. So in the end, because um, it's so early, we, we're not in winter. And to ask this early in our budget, you know, obviously they'll look for a, they will get from Gene a copy of our budget. And it will show that we've got money <coughs> and it's only the beginning of the year. So that being said, um, I did talk to Kevin about it and um, talk to Gene as well. And um, what I feel we kind of need to do is, is just we need to get it done. And then Jean said that um, there is money left over in the Norfolk Aggie um, account from what was budgeted. And now this has not been confirmed by Matt or anyone, not voted on, but the idea was that they may do a transfer back into our account at the Maytown meeting. At the Maytown meeting. Um, okay. But it hasn't been confirmed. I did send um, an email to Matt. I haven't heard back yet. Um, Jean has been on vacation, so he hasn't had an opportunity to speak with her about it, but I don't feel that we really yeah. want to put ourselves so, in a position. So for now, we would just fund it out of school choice? Well, no, I would or kind of, well, this year has been kind of a, a strange year for me. Yeah. Um, so because we have we have so much in order to keep ourselves, you know, level service that we've been um, putting towards school choice, okay. okay? But that, and I know we talked about this a little bit before, but that does create a lot of problems for me and Jean at year end, yeah. as far as money going back and forth. And we don't like to do payroll because you lose a lot of history, and that's 84% of our budget. So um, as you know, typically at the end of the year, we do have some funds left. So I'd rather, kind of like I've done the last few, few, few times, kind of talk to you about we just pay for it out of the general fund. If we needed to at the end of the year, we would. If we didn't get the transfer, yeah. So I'm still hoping we get the chance for at the annual town meeting. Then it would have to be, that would be the only other funding source would be school choice. Okay. So for now, we're just going to pay out of a general fund. That's the rain starting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, get, okay. we get nervous when it rains. Yeah, we do. We get very nervous when it rains. We get, ner yeah, we get nervous, water is not we get a nervous good when it doesn't rain. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. I can't believe it. So, so out of the general fund for now, and if we have right. to, we'll hear mm -hmm. choice. Yeah, I think that makes sense. And I would yeah. say go, to keep, go back to the... the, the um, the equipment, the exercise equipment as well. I think I think that probably makes sense there as well. You know, when I think of you know, if, if you have to use school choice dollars or something, those two things both make sense if if you have to. Mm -hmm. right. But I just I do want to caution the school committee though that we really have added a lot more yep. to the budget, and I'm going to be giving you this evening too. You know, the additional votes. I did do that um, document that I did for you guys last year, yeah. which is really good for us to see. You know, because you forget the votes that you're taking over and over. You know. Yeah between meetings and all. Um, so, I mean, this is something that we would have to shut down our schools if we right. didn't have any hot water. Right. Um, yeah. Um, I have a question, and I'm sorry, I'm not 100% tonight. You're, in describing the problem, you said something about how it wasn't properly wired. Correct. So, so my first inclination, not that I agree that we need to get go ahead and get it fixed, but is there any recourse for the fact that it is has failed or is failing because it wasn't properly installed? My understanding is that we signed off on it. They they signed off on it, and, and I don't know that there is any recourse at this point in time. I mean, we could, you know, it is a good question. I thought of that myself. With a lot of these things, we kind of were forced, it's like the Greece Center, we were forced to, to do that. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to you know run the kitchen there so um no definitely i mean these yeah. things need to be taken care of i just at the same time if it if if it's a problem you know then i, then I want to who who approved it you know 
how did it get approved if it was yeah the town if it was that would be the type. town or so that the, was just my question know, on that so yeah and there is no longer a school building committee anymore so yeah. um, um okay and yeah. and i don't know when the time i don't know if we need to put that equipment on the agenda i don't know when the time to talk about that is yeah, but i do important. think that that is but we, we, we have been talking about it, and, and again, you get the, the grease tank, then you get the, mm -hmm. the walkie-talkies, and then you get yeah. this. And, 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 and the and, Chromebooks. And, and, and the, so it was, yeah. it was, it's really a situation like it has. It's not that we haven't been talking about it. Um, the question, if, if, if we lose the hot water tank, we lose the school. So Oh, yeah. No, the, I, I, I that don't think up. there's any question right. in the hot yeah. water tank. I just... Um, just to Leslie's point yep. about, you know, it, it is classroom equipment, basically. It's, you know, it's it's used, it's not just used by athletes, it's used by, you know, people in gym class as well, so. Um, and I know there's been some discussion with other groups about helping with right. it. Right, um, with, with just to try to offset the cost, just to, you know, because it is, again, it's an unanticipated expense. Um, you know, if, if, if it would have been, if, if it, they had done the examination of the equipment right. earlier we might have been able to right. put it into the budget so that was just thing. my thing is do, Again, does that need to be a separate yeah. agenda yeah. but we maybe could have put on capital we can put on capital the capital plan as well take up the boiler avenue. discussion so okay. i mean we can always uh, we yeah. can get together with another budget subcommittee meeting if you want to at some point and we can we can look at it and, and explore um, yeah i think that makes before sense before the yeah. november 4th meeting if you want um yeah i think that makes sense good I'll make I a think note the to boilers do a budget. are no brainer. No, yeah, the yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. just it needs to be done. Which one, yeah. I'm just always hoping there's somebody else responsible for paying. Oh no, that's an, it yeah. is an excellent question. Yeah, well, it's it, responsible. It's whether you can get them to pay for it. There have been a lot of things that we have been paying for out of our budget since, yeah. So yeah. And the, the, the two buildings just uh, yeah. you know continuously Constant you turn around things. it's 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 one thing after another. Um, you know the grease tank and the leaks that we've had mm -hmm. and, and so on the and so RUs, forth. But the doors, uh, yeah. Uh, so we'll um, we'll get this. This will get taken care of. Um, Jeff's got a, a, a company, and we'll be getting that taken care of. So that was the first right. thing. But that that was just a quote. I have to yeah. actually do a procurement process. Right. Yeah. But sooner rather than later, we will. Oh yeah, definitely. We'll get on that. Uh, the second thing I had is um, we had looked at the public speech uh, policy as as was uh, submitted to us from the the state about the considering making some adjustments and the only one that we had a question on was number 10 and um, so I just threw together some wording um, and it reads this way that critical comments that are made during public speech that show the school district in a negative light can only be restricted by the chair of the school committee if these comments have been previously declared as defamatory by the court system this restriction during public speech by the chair of the school committee must be supported by formal declaration of comments being deemed defamatory. So basically the long and short of it is, is, is that you don't have the ability to declare something being said, Brett, as defamatory. You can ask them to change the wording in, in, in how they're presenting it, but what ended up happening was in, in this court case was that they, they um, shut down the meetings twice because they, they claimed that it was defamatory speech, and the right. fact of the matter was that it had never been declared by the courts to be defamatory. So therefore, what it's basically saying is that you can't say that it's defamatory unless it had happened, it went to court, and they came back and said it again, then you could say that it was defamatory. So I've got to keep track of that. So that was, the, <laughs> that was the only other change, but it did, I mean, this is, it has created a significant brouhaha in the state, and, um, um, where they're they are running into a lot of, of issues with public speech sections it's one um, of those policies policies you have to have but you hope you never have to use correct you know? correct um so, so um so this is the uh, second reading so second i would bring it back so, so again, i didn't know if there's anything else to, do we actually have to read this out loud like uh, on a second on a reading are we supposed to do that from a, from a public meeting or no i don't think it's okay you have to. okay mm. And if we, if you, uh, we, gotta, we gotta bring it back again anyway yeah. so if you want the next time we can yeah. try to find that out okay. and, if, and if we do I'll read it at the next meeting yeah. I didn't, and that was the only thing that you had asked me to look at was number 10 well the only one that I, I read in the, in the meeting minutes and I think it was on number 9 that Becky had brought up um, it was public speakers prohibited from presenting formal complaints aimed at a specific 
or any members of the faculty, staff, or members of the student body, oh, the and we family. mentioned and including the student family as yeah, well. Yeah, so I, I, I did not, I went back and looked at the literature. Okay. There was nothing in there about extended families and so forth, so I didn't okay. add it in at this point. Okay. I can call the lawyers if you would like to have me look at I don't that. think it's that significant. I mean, yeah. it's in another one of the points that if it's, um, you know, like obviously vulgar or, right. you know, so yeah. improper, out of the scope. Right. So I think yeah. probably if it becomes an attack on so someone's there is, parents, right. there, is, there is a safe that, that you, could, you could stop that speech okay. if, if you wanted to. Um, All right. So I'll bring it back again, and I will try to get the information from um, the, 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 whether or not it needs to be publicly read in its entirety uh, at the next meeting. Let me look. Okay. This is what we're going out here. So, Mr. Maines, we actually do have your presentation included in our packet, so... Oh, you do? We, we can stay here. Oh, rather than All right. Very good. Um, then the next thing is, and I think, Scott, you have the button to turn us our projector on. And if I could impose on the four administrators who are here, um, while I have them up, if you want to grab, bring a chair and come on up, one big happy family. And Leslie, you'll be all by yourself oh. in the audience. So <coughs> bear with me. <laughs> Sorry. That works. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate that. Come on up. Only you don't use defamatory language. One of the things I we, we, we would share is that, um, uh, just as an aside, uh, Ms. Nasuti is not with us here tonight as she had a, a fall in the school on a stairwell. Um, and she did have some, some injuries to her shoulder and to her hip. Um, and we found out today that she may have had a concussion as well. Okay. Um, oh. it, was, um, it, was pretty, it was a pretty horrifying day and, and um, pretty scary event, and uh, we did immediately get uh, the ambulance here, and she did go to the, the hospital, and it was... Um, but anyways, that's why she is not here. She is out right now uh, as a result of her injuries. Well, please let her know that we're and asking for absolutely. her. Absolutely. And as I said, quickly. Cindy is celebrating her 40th birthday, so... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... Uh, the, the goal tonight was to um, kind of continue with what we had brought forward uh, a couple of years ago, uh, the 17-18 year, where we had the, the plan for moving the district forward. Um, and so the goal tonight is to just continue. Now, the reason why I asked the, the admin team to be here as well is to speak specifically to their buildings or to a program or to something along those lines, um, much like we did um, at the FinCom last year and much like we did uh, in 1718 when we presented the original plan, those of us who were here, so Mr. Bell was not here, Josh was here, you were Brian here. was here, yep. and Neely, of course, was First here as well, right? and Courtney was here as well. Um, I'm not sure, actually, who on the committee was not here, so Becky was not here, and Kelly, were you here? Yeah. You were probably in the if audience. If I wasn't here, yeah, I was there. there. <laughs> probably in the audience. Okay, so these are uh, obviously the people that will be presenting it. As I said, the reason why I mentioned Laura is because she's on that slide and she's not here. All right, so the first thing, and, and, and Brett, you brought this up the other day uh, at the last meeting about MCAS data. So the, the admin team and has begun the process of gathering uh, MCAS data. It's been a little bit difficult this year. It's been, um, it has not been as fluid coming out of the DESE and getting information and getting data and so forth. Um, again, our goal is to look at areas where we have performed very well, areas where we have not performed so well, uh, sort of try to look at the strands, the types of questions, you know, and then uh, what we're going to do with our vertical teams is to get our vertical teams engaged in, you know, um, a look at, a broader look between grades, you know, how are you covering that standard, uh, what are you, are you addressing these types of questions with the students in grade five, we do it in grade six, um, and so that's kind of the objective. So. Right now, they're all collecting their data. We've, we've had a chance to take a look at it. I've, I've disseminated some data with them as well. And then the plan would be that we would then show it to you as the, an open session, um, which we think we're going to have to move back to the 20th because of right now, there's still uh, some hold up on getting to the release of some data and so forth. So we'll probably move to November the 20th, which might be also a chance for us to do the, by that time, we may have the Adams scholars and so forth. We can do both of them. But then the... Administrators will share the information 
uh, with their faculty at faculty meetings, but also they can, in, with common planning time or by, uh, by department uh, meetings, they can then share the information with uh, the, the, the teachers themselves. And then they can use their common planning time to look at, okay, why did we do really well on this, but we didn't do well on this particular content strand and so forth. Um, same thing that we've done over the last couple of years, which, um, uh, you know, taking a look at the data at the elementary and at the middle, you guys can marry it in with the NWEA data that you also have, which, is, which gives them a, an, another data point to compare. Um, you know, as you know, MCAS is just a, 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 a moment in time that this gives them additional data that they can then look at, okay, look at that standard. How did they do when they took it with the NWEA and are we seeing improvements or is it just a, a blip in the screen? And then the idea would be during the course of the year to really be refining and working on, you know, curriculum and lessons and, and how we're going to do a better job of addressing those areas where there is some area, uh, some weaknesses that we've identified. And that's can the I, can data. Can I yep. briefly on MCAS? And yep. maybe this is a question not necessarily for an answer now, but to think about as we get to presenting the MCAS data later. Are, are we happy with MCAS as, as, as a measurement tool still? Um, do we agree with the standards that it's measuring? Is it, you know, is it improving? Is it getting worse? Do, do we feel like it's keeping up with the standards we want? Again, not look necessarily looking to put you all on spot for an answer now. It's something I've been curious about for the last couple of MCAS discussions. Right. Generally. So if we could add that into the discussion for next time, or if you guys feel like speaking on it now. I'd love to take a crack at that. Okay. Good. Uh, in the, we're particularly, the standing order in, in the middle school is not to teach to the test yep. and look at questions and just teach that question or teach a question like that or right. yes we look at the standards but the thing that the teachers uh, particularly around literacy and uh, ELA which when we report out you'll see a significant growth in the middle school over the last three years yep. particularly the last two because <laughs> of a programmatic approach to literacy which was something that we were lacking of we we're traditionally strong in it in Douglas, but the middle school somehow wasn't performing as well as we should have. And so we, we focused on that and there's uh, double digit growth in the last two years and even in, in, in with 22% exceeding state, uh, exceeding expectations in, in grade six. Yeah. But, but to answer your question, none of it is, those results are not a result of teach to the test, it's teaching great literacy. What does great writing look like? What does great <coughs> reading look like? What is vocabulary, mechanics, content, mastery, great learning, great teaching? Yeah. So that, At, that tells me that if it, it probably is aligned with our values. Uh, right. for, for, it's, it's, it's aligned with our own standards, let's put it that way. If, if, if we're seeing the grades go up there as we're improving our instruction in those areas, then it, it feels like it is aligned. And, and my teacher agree with that. Is, so. the, the teacher that, said we didn't, we didn't focus on yeah. MCAS and the standard. We focused on yeah. getting kids to love reading, having uh, okay. a, a strong writing program. <clears throat> and a strong vocabulary program and it, it has netted results in it, what I consider a short time. Yep. Again, I'll report out and it's all public yep. information at this point, but you know, our same kids, same schools, same, the math doesn't reflect the abilities that the kids have shown in ELA and that's something that we're taking a look at. So what do we do well in ELA and how do we use that in math, the same kids? And so that's what the vertical team alignment's gonna, but ag again, if, can we take the same approach, and I'm sitting in as uh, uh, the, the admin administrator oversight with the chair for the math vertical team, can we attack math the same way we did ELA and get the same results in the next two, three years? Yeah. Not to impress the MCAS gods, yeah. but to, to as a, as a measurement of what great learning looks like. Yeah. Does that help? Is that it does no? That, that, that's what I'm trying to get at. Is you know, is, is MCAS measuring the things that that we think it should be measuring and value um, from our students? And um, it sounds like at least in the ELA example, it probably is. If we're seeing, we've made a concerted effort here, not necessarily to teach it to the test, but the test results improve. So it feels like alignment. So that was a goal. So. And, and we see the MCAS as one piece of data. Um, for example, at the high school, they will have PSAT results, they'll have SAT results, they have AP results. So there's a, there's a lot of different data points that you can pull in. The MCAS is just a, a, a strand of it. 
Uh, going back to Brian's point on the math piece, and I don't know if John, if you want to jump in, um, one of the things that we had talked about was we we were exploring a new math program for for next year. We we added the math um, Title One position, which I think it might be the third year. I think it is. The, this is the third year we've had Title One. I think. Yeah. This is the third year I think we've had the Title One teacher. Yes. Okay. It is. Yeah. So so you've got that in place, much like like Brian was saying with the, with the literacy. So we've had the reading in in, in literacy in, in Title One for a while. So the math has kicked in. But we had looked at a program, and you're you're going to a conference. November 7th, Cindy and I are going to a conference in Worcester. Um, it's ST Math, and uh, Kevin connected with them at the superintendent conference this summer. Um, Cindy and I met with um, the rep um, earlier this, uh, it was right at the end of the summer. Um, but they, there's a grant from that Massachusetts has, Department of Education has worked with. Um, so it's pretty much free. We, there's, there's a little bit of administrative costs that we have to pay for it. Um, so we have Go Math as our resource currently, um, but we need a supplement for students um, to work on fact fluency and, um, and some different things. Um, from what I've seen, they gave us a trial. I've used it with my kids at home and they love it. I have a four-year-old, a, a seven-year-old, and a nine-year-old that I've used it with. Um, it's, it's, it's a self-paced on the iPad um, where there's no words at all used. It's all done through pictures and orientation. And, um, and so it's really neat because a lot of times math students are held back because they don't have the language skills necessarily. Um, and this way it takes that out of the, the equation completely. So it's, it's a neat program. I'm curious to hear more about it. We're gonna learn more about the grant writing process in that aspect. Um, it's not gonna replace our instruction. Our teachers still are gonna be doing the majority of the teaching. Um, we're working a lot with doing small groups during math, just like we do in, in language arts. Um, and so while the teacher's working with a group of six or seven students, what is everybody else in the class doing? It's a great opportunity um, for some productive things to still be happening um, with those students because um, it's self-paced. It's on, the, on a, we don't want to just throw a kid on a device, but um, it's a, in the right quantities it can be used effectively. So um, we're going to get some more information on that to see if it's the, uh, the right supplement. Um, if it's not, then we're going to continue to look for different opportunities for, for those supplementary resources. So I was sitting at a table with um, some friends that known for quite a number of years. One is the superintendent now in, in Dover Sherbin, the other is the assistant superintendent in Burlington. And um, they were actually engaged in a conversation with the gentleman. I was just sort of sitting by the side. And then I got introduced to him and the, the, these two gentlemen who I think the world of and have, I mean, Dover Sherbin's the number one school in the, in the state. They're using it and they raved about it. And when they said free, I said, Sign us up. That's, 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 that. We can afford free. So, um, so I, I, I'm glad that they're, they're going ahead Several and doing that. So uh, hopefully that, that... It does, yeah. And, and again, if, if, if there's further thoughts on it later during our IMCAS discussion, great. But it, yep. I think that, that helps answer the question. I, I don't want to sidetrack us too much there. Uh, the next thing that I had <coughs> on the board was the Blackstone Valley Consortium. So uh, Josh is still involved in, with the subcommittee. I will tell you that, that I had a meeting with the superintendents just recently. Um, let, let me backtrack a little bit. The genesis of this, Brett, goes back to when we were meeting with Doc Samuels in the whole nine yards. And, and when, we, when I presented it at, at the um, superintendents meeting, it, it, it sort of lit a fuse with, with a lot of the other superintendents. Um, we did get $25,000 seed money to start the program for, um, you know, somebody to direct the program, which they have reached out and they have hired um, Paul Lasky, who used to be the, the chair of the, of the uh, Blackstone Valley Education Collaborative. Um, he's going he's gonna to be the take oversight of it. And uh, their, uh, the first course they offered was a manufacturing course, which didn't appeal to our kids because we already have manufacturing here in the, in the district. Um, but I, the word that I'm receiving is that it's been fantastic. It's been extremely well received by the by the schools in the valley, and they are going to. We have already started talking about exploring additional opportunities at our last Friday's professional development meeting. I brought this up at the um, at our development meeting with the staff that we're going to be looking to offer some courses, and it's going to expand over the next couple of years to where we thought it would be, which was that. You know, if, if, if nobody in else is offering AP microeconomics like we do here, and I even mentioned Brian McGrath there, it's a natural for him to teach an, an additional course through the Blackstone Valley Consortium for kids in the valley who can then get AP microeconomics where they can't get it in their building. And conversely, if there's something that's being offered in, in another, another district that we're not able to access, we could then access it. So... Um, it was 
conversation two years ago, it was more active conversation last year, it's in place. So some of the things to think about is going forward for next year is the planning around that there will be some costs involved in it because there will be, if we're going to have, um, you know, do we need to get books? Do we need to have some transportation costs? Are there some fees that we'll have to pay into the consortium in order to make it work? I don't, I don't see it going from one course to 100. I see it going from one course to maybe two or three courses um, next year and then continuing to grow. I know, I think you were instrumental in getting that initial seed money through our state representatives. I would just say, Correct. you know, keep that in, in the loop. This sounds like the kind of thing that they're going to be very interested in and might be able to further assist on. Right, so we're looking to see if we can get them to, when I originally talked with, uh, with Mr. McKenna and Mr. Fatman was that um, this was a, a great start and we really saw it as something that was going to grow, but conversely, having somebody to oversee it would be an important piece of it in that there would be you know, if we could get funding from them to help us with that, that would be that would be great. So I think they're on board. Uh, and as I told you, he reached out just recently. We talked just recently about just about that. I think that there's other regions that if we can make this really go in the next couple of years, they're going to jump on board and they're going to do the same thing because it just makes sense oh, because everything with distance learning, you can do all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And Sutton, actually, I, I don't know if I told you this. The, last week I, I ran into the Sutton principal and they don't have a shop. It's a brand new right. school. They don't have a shop. And so he asked me about maybe partnering up for some manufacturing programs. They have vans; so they can transport the kids to, this, to our school to use our facility. And you know, it's it's a maybe way. This makes forward. sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, we want to tap into Uxbridge if we can for some of the things that they're doing with engineering and so forth. Yeah. Sharing is caring. Mm -hmm. That's right. If we can afford sharing. We can't afford the programs on our own. Yeah. Um, the other thing that, that uh, Josh has underway is a relationship right now with QCC on early college programming. Um, this is a, a natural fit. Uh, it provides students an opportunity uh, on their own to earn additional credits, to earn credit, college credits while they're attending high school. Much like we have with our 12th year program at Quinsig. So if a student wants to go to Quinsig, they can earn college credits that will transfer in, in, in while they're doing their senior year. They have to meet our graduation requirements. This would be something above and beyond. Again, this also, I hope Doc isn't watching at home tonight, but we're gonna laud Doc Samuels again because it was his idea that this is something that we should really be looking to explore. Mm -hmm. um, at the time, we were talking about the architect, Boston Architectural. They wanted uh, a lot of money for our kids yeah. to participate. So. <laughs> but the, the QCC, is, it's just a couple hundred dollars and we're, we're gonna try to, um, form a cohort between Uxbridge, um, Douglas, and QCC to offer four undergraduate courses. Kids can take two as juniors, two as seniors. They leave and they have um, you know, four, a semester of college basically under their belt. And um, you know, it, it's rolled out slowly. The Uxbridge had the same thing. They're a few years ahead of us. So they've got about 16 kids participating. We have one, but uh, it's one more than we had last year. So you know, we had two, one dropped. Um, but. Yeah, the important thing is to have have the offering, and then right. hopefully, and then it's from there. It's, it, you know. it's how to market it and build it to the to the kids. So there's some additional courses too that they're willing to offer after school. You know, if a kid wanted to pick up an extra computer course or something like that, yep. they can do that. So great. And then we do have uh, articulation with Becker that we just haven't implemented yet for yep. our anatomy and physiology. So a student who takes our anatomy and physiology will be able to get credit at Becker College. And they have a couple other things too with biomed and things like that that we could implement if we add those courses. So. So, I mean, credit to Josh for going out and reaching out. I kind of charged him with, hey, give, give some other people a call. Maybe they'll, you know, maybe they're, I, I don't anticipate that Holy Cross or Clark or WPI are gonna jump on board. All they can tell you is, you know, we're not interested. Okay, great, thank you. You know, and, and if we can get anything we can provide for opportunities. So, you know, Nichols, uh, one of the things that um, I'll talk about in a little bit is the business program and, and so forth. But if, if Nichols could get on board, it might be an opportunity for a kid who's interested in going to business school, to maybe try some uh, intro business courses at, at Nichols while they're at, at school here. So, but you marry that up with the, the fact, and, and the good news that Leslie is here, is you marry it up with the AP that we presently offer and, and the benefits that can happen with that is, is now, you've, you, you, now you've got a second vehicle where kids can earn you know, college credits while they're in high school. And I, and I know your children both all had lots of credits that they earned while they were taking the APs and so forth, which is, you know, which is a great thing. It's a great thing. So the early college program, again. Uh, this one, uh, I, animal science, which I know we've talked about quite a bit. 
Um, you know, again, Doc Samuels again, but, but this was really something that we all agreed that, and, and, and when I brought it up with the superintendents, they all said the same thing. Kids don't, kids want, who want pre-vet are gonna go to, to Norfolk because they wanna get it, which makes perfect sense. But if we can move in that direction, and you don't need to get on a bus and drive an hour and 10 minutes to, to Walpole and an hour and 10 minutes back, they, they will jump on. As, and as you know, we, we did have, we had an articulation with the uh, Douglas Orchard, which I'm sure we could reinstitute in, in, no, in no time at all, which would give us an opportunity. They do have a lot of the small animals. And as it turns out, um, uh, in talking with Melanie Brundage, who's the nurse at the elementary school, um, her husband and her uh, are very big into uh, the animal husbandry, and they have um, oxens. As a matter of fact, she is the superintendent of oxens in Massachusetts. I bet you didn't know that. I had no idea. You could do that after you retire. I'm going to retire and become the superintendent <laughs> of uh, ducks. I don't know. <laughs> Something. Uh, but there's another connection right there. And at the time, actually, Doc Samuels actually had us hooked up with Tufts Medical, uh, Tufts, yeah, Tufts Veterinary School. And I, I'm sure that that's something that could be rearticulated down the road. It's just a question of offering uh, some of the courses. Um, and we did have a, when I did the um, student interest survey, that was the zoology basically was the second most popular um, potential elective uh, offering, only second after criminal justice. So it was a very popular, there was a lot of interest in it. And again, I think it is a, a, a niche that we could, we could capitalize on, and it would be married up with the plant science piece, which we've talked about, which is, which is also, to me, is, a, is, a, is a, a simple one to implement and to grow, if you'll pardon the expression. Um, we could grow plant science in a way where it, it, it builds over time. Same thing with the animal. It would build over time. You, you've got to start somewhere and generate a, the word in the valley is that if you're looking at pre-vet that you, you might want to look at, you know, can you get the courses that you need at, at in, in Douglas, maybe you school choice to Douglas rather than going to um, uh, Norfolk. We, we won't have large machinery and, and some of the other things, exotic birds and animals and so forth, but we would have some of the basic stuff that you could you get. The plant science is the other piece of it. Um, you know, uh, there, is a, there is an interest in horticulture. Um, we did have, uh, again, we have the local uh, uh, memorandum, memorandum of agreement with the orchard, which also has the, the apple trees, the blueberry bushes, the, 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 the greenhouse, and so forth. So we could, again, have our, animal, our, our plant science students articulate down there. Um, one of the things that we had talked about was uh, that Josh is going to maybe can talk about now, and we could, uh, when we get to it, we'll just go over it, but the construction course. Yeah. Um, that they, if, if we, there's a construction program that the Mass Builders Association puts on because there is a tremendous shortage of people going into the construction fields, manufacturing fields, whether it's carpentry, plumbing, HVAC, all of those things. Um, folk schools don't graduate kids to go into trades anymore. Um, so there, there is a niche for that, not even a niche, there's an opening for people to go into that field. Um, what we'd be looking at is prepping them for that apprenticeship that they'd start after they graduate. So um, there's a couple of options that we're looking at. One is with the Mass Builders Association, um, and they provide a lot of money. They provide the training. They provide um, tool belts for the kids. Um, and then they do a capstone project, which at Milford High was uh, small houses actually on wheels. So they're building a house on a trailer, basically. Um, but there's, there's no reason that that couldn't be constructing a greenhouse, constructing raised, beds, gar raised bed gardens, so. It, it, you met with somebody recently. That was the Mass Builders. Mass Builders, and then I've got to get you um, married up with the guy in Millbury who also is part of the, um, the union, and they're looking to run something as well because they're all running the same thing. And this is, I, I, here we go, Doc said the same thing, that there are definitely, there are definitely needs for you know, construction and carpentry and, 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 and that kind of stuff, where kids can come right out. Now, right now, we, we test them at the level one. Yeah, with MACWIC, which is a manufacturing certification. We actually have the highest pass rate in the valley, mm -hmm. including better than BVT. But, um, you know, I didn't want to jump the gun on that. But we do have um, 
about 24% of the kids said that they were interested in horticulture and plant sciences. And it's, an, it's also something that can be done by the, the Stars and Stripes program too. They already maintain gardens during the, the summer months especially, but it's another aspect of their program. Their science curriculum, their biology curriculum can, can focus heavy on um, plant science and horticulture. As you may be aware, is in the in the outdoor of the um, quad, whatever courtyard, yeah. courtyard, whatever we call it, uh, Mary Delphos and the people in the Stars program have maintained a garden out there for the last three, four, five years, with you know just some tomatoes and things like that. And so, so the theory was with the with the with the raised beds, and as part of the extended year program for the Stars program, they would be able to work and maintain the beds, but also to be able to bring the the, the, the things the food down to you know a community um, um, food collection agency type of thing for di distribution and so forth um, so you know that's and that again none of these uh, are what, that you're talking about are, are, are big money they really are not the, the, the issue right now is if you look at the animal and plant science and uh, the, 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 the pre the biomedical really one person to start the programs he'd have to shift some staff around at the high school for, for their expertise but for one person for forty-eight thousand dollars, you could implement the plant science, the animal science, and and, and offer next biomed. Thing, the biomed. That's the next slide, actually. Yeah, which is which is there. So you got, you know, one of the things that we found when we looked at the surveys um, that came back with the SATs is that our kids are interested in medical studies. Our, our kids who took the SATs, twenty-seven percent of them, which was by far the, the largest group, were interested in um, the health professions, and another six percent in biology and biomedical sciences. And so that's a third of our students that took the SATs are looking for um, medical, biomed, and health services. So and so we already offer the anatomy and physiology. We already offer the AP in, cal uh, uh, in chemistry and bio and so forth. You know, you're looking to expand maybe a biomedical course. Um, Josh and I had talked the other day, maybe if there's a real interest, you know, in anatomy and physiology one, anatomy and physiology two type of thing. Um, but it also provide the kids the opportunity to do the certification program if they if they're so interested in in that in that program much like they would do it at BVT. Because yeah. we, I mean, again, we have a lot of this in place. We just need to marry it all together. Um, the next one is is the STEM and robotics. So um, one of the things that we had on on the plan for the last two years was originally I think we had it as technology. And we, I think we, we've made the decision recently that maybe technology is too narrow and maybe we can get somebody as a STEM teacher. So as you know, you. Uh, Brian, maybe you could talk a little bit, let the, um, the committee know, how's things going with STEM at the middle school? Wonderful. We're only six weeks into it, but it's uh, showing great promise. So it's, uh, uh, we are working closely with the uh, ASA, who is our sponsor of the $100,000 grant. Yep. We've definitely had the right person in place. Uh, the kids are, uh, we've used the media center, the, the library, as our new STEM lab. It's a wonderful uh, alternate use of it and probably the best it's ever been used where uh, it's a special and it's very spread out. And in six weeks, we haven't had a singular disciplinary problem in a space that big in what could be considered unstructured time. That is, the kids have free reign of the entire space and they're completing their task, and they're coming back. Um, I, I think the, the best shout out is, uh, the best um, high water mark is the, the teacher was at a professional development last week. We had a highly respected sub that's been in the district for a long time, and she found her way to my office and she said, this is the best class I've ever had to sub for and it's a brand new class, which just tells me the kids really like what they're doing. She said, I didn't even have to say anything. They just showed up and just started doing their projects. And then when it was time, and I just read what I had to read at the time I had to, and they just all, and she said it was class after class after class, which I think is testimony to we have the right person doing the right thing. The kids are interested. They're engaged. And we are in the very early innings of it. This was, you, know, you ain't seen nothing yet, but it's, it's a great place to start. So. Wonderful hands-on opportunities for the kids, and that's Brian's been talking about that for years. They really need, you know, an opportunity to do that type of that type of work. So um, when uh, John and, and, and uh, Cindy had an opportunity to talk a little bit about it, and, and 
the, the goal would be to, to change that technology position to a STEM position that would go as a special between the two buildings. Um, it would give us a fourth special, but also it would, it would allow us to build a STEM and uh, fifth, a fifth special. Fifth special. We give us a fifth special, but would allow us to build a STEM program. You know, as you know, that Cindy's already doing robotic stuff at the, at, the, at her school. If this is a, if this would build upon it. Again, for one for one teaching position, you're bringing STEM to six grade levels, seven grade levels, um, on a rotational basis, and it's the same thing. It would be obviously scaled down, but hands-on learning opportunities. So, John, if you want to. Yeah, it, it, it's exposure to the same content that we're doing at the middle school and high school at a younger age. I mean, our teachers are doing it smatterings here and there, but it would be a more um, strategic approach to making sure that they're exposed. Um, and it, Cindy and I, we sat down, we looked at the standards for what's out there for elementary school. Um, I think there's a lot we can do with you know, the hands-on STEM learning with science and, and math and technology. Um, but there's also, as you get up into second grade, third grade, um, digital citizenship is something that our students don't necessarily, we don't have a time when that's being taught to our kids, but it's a needed skill in today's world. Um, keyboarding skills, how to format Word documents, those types of things, we need time to do those things as well, um, and it's not being done currently. So there's just some, some technolo technology pieces that our kids need, but also the hands-on um, building and creating and problem solving, um, and so there's some neat things we can do with that. Um, also, one thing we're noticing is uh, we had a fifth kindergarten class this year, so we have some big classes. We only have four specials, so right now, Cindy, has one of her kindergarten classes when they go to specials um, split into four different groups and going so we have 30 kindergartners in a specials class um, if we have any bigger kindergarten classes that's going to continue to be a, a bigger problem and so as we have five sections of uh, classes we almost need a fifth special to help cover fix some of those scheduling issues that we're starting to see um, so it, it, there's a lot of benefit with with the instruction but it's also uh, going to be a need um, scheduling wise as we continue to grow as a district I would just say, and again, maybe you guys have already thought about this, but you know, bringing up the the, the trades um, is is there an opportunity in in using STEM and how it applies to some of these trades as well, and you know, to to, to work some of of you know, developing interest in some of those trades <coughs> among students as well. I think I think it's technology and robotics. It's pushed at them so much these days. It'd be interesting to see how again, they, they react to some of the more traditional trade stuff too, and again, how, how STEM applies to that, and I, th I think it is very applicable. So. Well, I'll, I, I can answer that with the, uh, the focus on the E of STEM that uh, Ms. Nichols, Ms. Nichols, Ms. Uh, Walker, system teacher, uh, for the remainder of this year and for the better part of next year, we are focusing on engineering, mm -hmm. the breaking in the build, the understanding, you know, the material, um, material sciences, allowing kids to fail, using measurement as to load testing and, and construction materials as to what works, what doesn't, to expose students to the trades, give them idea that, that building thing, things still need to be built, someone's got to build them, and it's all around technology and, and best practices and environmentally sound, and so that is a, a major focus. Thanks. I have a quick question. Yep, if I may. Absolutely. Um, in terms of like STEM is such a broad topic, just as a special when you're talking about um, building, you know, I'm thinking I went to a very nerdy school. There's the civil engineering, there's mechanical engineering, there's coding, there's all of these, there's even biomedical engineering, which might tap into some of this, what we've talked about already. Is there a plan or might there be a plan in the future to rotate some of those topics or is absolutely it, okay. yes um, and it's again I'd be happy to also show you our, our blueprint within the uh, uh, grant that we had uh, three I had to give them a three-year plan yeah and what might that look like but the, the, the number one thing that we're just trying to because this is so new to yeah. Douglas and we've never had it well we, we've had a class where we've reinvigorated it, but none of the students that are currently taking it were privy to the earlier uh, stem attempts um, the first couple of weeks was just design process collaboration you know, getting everybody on the same page and then there will be different tiers of of opportunity that students will use to differentiate between six seven and eight yeah. and it, and this is something that that and it's not just uh miss walker and myself we have miss finlay who is an adjunct professor of uh stem um uh, teaching stem at uh, framingham state we have mrs um graves and Payne, who's eighth grade uh, science teacher, but she's also well known um, for working with. Again, she went with us in Medtronic. She worked with Lens Corporation, Waters Corporation, WPI. Uh, Mrs. Mrs. Finlay and Mrs. Gravis and Payne were just recognized as exemplars at WPI, uh, scoring a uh, 
free classes for our teachers, professional development. Point being, we have a lot of great people yeah. to differentiate the learning and build out from the engineering foundation that we have into some of the other in technology, integrating the math and the science, and looking at some of the other opportunities we have around bioengineering or mechanical engineering or robotics and things of that nature. So, but just wetting the appetite, right. getting, yeah. getting the, 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 and the same thing involved. would happen with, with um, the elementary and the primary school. They would need to get together, collaborate, and, and really figure out a, a, a pre K through five. What does it look like, and, and right. what are we going to be doing in each of these grades so that they can differentiate and, and do different topics as well? So, right, yeah, okay. Good. Um, Brian just mentioned Project Lead the Way. Uh, they did a presentation, uh, Jess Finlay and uh, uh, Kelly Graveson Payne, and they were recognized, as he said, as the top presenters at uh, WPI's STEMathon. Um, really an outstanding uh, recognition for the two of them, and they, they are, in fact, great uh, resources that will help us when we, if, if we can go forward with the STEM piece. Um, I've always said that the best, the best professional development is found in, 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 internally. So um, as a result, there's four sessions that they have, and so all of the Douglas teachers that if they have an interest and want to attend those STEM presentations and in, in, in conferences, they would be able to go with, with no charge, which is which is great. It gives us our, our, our teachers an opportunity to get to WPI to learn more about STEM instruction and so forth. Uh, Project Lead the Way. I ran into the people down at at, at the Cape as well. Um, we are we have some people that are going out on the 21st to a conference at WPI for Project Lead the Way. Uh, this is a program that is really well funded at, uh, from Governor Baker and others, and they're looking to, you know, get this is this is where um, innovation pathways and Project Lead the Way are sort of the same thing, and this is how they are they're they're, they're getting kids and, and students interested in these STEM courses and so forth. Well, Project Lead the Way, um, they also have um, a lot of funding, and they really want us to get involved. So, um, Jess and and. and Kelly Graveson are already involved with Project Lead the Way, uh, so naturally it would make sense that um, the other science teachers at, at the middle school, but also at the high school, and get, get involved with Project Lead the Way also down all the way. It's a pre-K through 12, so um, we're, we're, we're beginning to explore that. Again, there's, nothing, there's no cost to that. It's just attending the conferences, but getting, getting them on our radar so that we can maybe capitalize on some of the things that they have to offer us. Uh, Josh talked about the construction course, so whether it's a manufacturing course, um, it, simply, it seems to make sense, but also it, it would probably give us an opportunity to link in with the Ed Hub in Northbridge as well, which would allow our kids to be exposed to some more of the machines that we, that we're not, that we don't know. Again, only thing involved in that would be some, some, probably some transportation cost, and really probably not, because parents could probably take them on it. Most of it's on Saturdays anyway, so there really wouldn't Is be much. Is that the education collaborative? Thing? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's, on, that's under the Blackstone education. Valley okay. Education Collaborative. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, the next one is, is Spanish. We already, obviously already offer Spanish. Um, with Josh having made, um, been able to get the mandate that they, they take a, a Spanish, one of the things that was always an issue was that we were going to develop a culture and communication course. Uh, so from grade eight, nine, and 10. Um, so we need to uh, begin the articulation of that so that it, it, for those students who maybe are not going to stay with Spanish all the way to AP or Spanish four, but are going to do, uh, they can do culture communications, so, and then Spanish one here at the high school, and then a culture and communications at the high school here, which would, in essence, when they apply to college, would give them three years of, a, of Spanish, but it wouldn't be the traditional, ad, you know, con conjugating verbs and, and all that other stuff that they normally do. This would be a little bit more of a converse, learn about the culture, projects, and so on and so forth. Um, again, no cost to that, we just need to, we need to develop it so that uh, the kids who are coming through the system will be able to meet that graduation requirement. Uh, English learners, um, uh, Laura has been here. We, we've talked about the growth in the program. Um, right now, um, there are 14 students who qualify under the program. Right now, those 14 students in three different buildings are being taught by one person. So she's constantly on, on her roller skates going between buildings. Um, one of the things that we also need to keep in mind is that Laura is actually sort of directing the program, but is not really, she's our special education team chair, um, so it's really, um, it's not really the same thing. <coughs> Yale is not part of spe special education. So one of the things that we, had, we, we were having some difficulty with, just to share with you, is you approved a .6 
for EO because we had some new students that moved in in, in order to service them. Uh, we received one application in two weeks, and the person who applied is not certified. So really we have nobody at this point. So one of the things that we, we need to consider is, is, is that this program is going to grow, and the only possible way that it might grow might be to expand it now to get somebody to come in and take the position, transition some of what Laura is doing away from her so that she can spend her time helping Neely, who needs some help in special education, but we pulled Laura away from special education to do this. So just some things to consider down the road. But this, this program, I think we know, is going to continue to grow a little bit, especially with the development going in and so forth. Okay, so just make sure I understand. So the idea would be to possibly expand that recent point six approval to a full but the person you hire would also run the pro. In addition to being an instructor, right. the educator, they, they right. would be the, the in charge of the program as well. Yeah. Okay. Laura, Laura would still provide some oversight, but technically, she, this, the other the woman who's okay. been with us for uh, Liz, who's been with us for a number of years, would would sort of take over a lot of the the overseeing. Okay. Of, okay. But Laura would be part of the <coughs> access testing and so on and so forth. Um, unified sports program. Um, now, we had talked about this for quite a period of time. Uh, some, of the, some of the schools in the Valley now are actually offering it and now actually participating in it. Uh, what does that mean for us? You know, we did last year, we did a, a bowling get together, which was really great, but we're really looking to expand it and make it a little bit more of, a, of, a, of an experience for our students. Uh, so there is some cost that we think uh, nearly did budget for some of it, but I think if we really, and we really would like to try to get it going this year, if possible, um, to expand so that we would offer in, the, um, in November maybe a round robin, one day basketball type of thing, maybe not a tournament, but maybe a skills thing or something along those lines. But then in the winter, we would like to do two or three bowling events, and then in the spring, we would like to do two or three small field soccer events. Um, so you would need, at some point, we're going to need to have somebody who's going to take responsibility for this. Neely has uh, volunteered to take over this with a little bit of a stipend for it, but she really doesn't have the time or the, or the able ability to, to, to take on more, but God bless her. Um, and then we would try to get a, a coach for each of the seasons, you know, for, for some short money, and then we would probably need a little bit of transportation. Some money has been budgeted. So um, I, I think there would be a little bit of a cost incurred uh, for us to to really try to implement it this year, which is something that we have been talking about for a period, period of time. Uh, I throw that out to you. We'll come back and talk a little bit more about it, but it is something that we should be considering. Um, Josh, you can maybe talk a little bit about this, but the Distributive Education Clubs of America, that was the old name. I don't know if they've, ch they've changed the name, uh, DECA. It's a, it's a business program. And uh, uh, as you know, we, we, we now have a... a uh, Bill Hillman is our teacher in business, and we're really trying to push marketing, finance, uh, personal finance, but also finance and uh, entrepreneurship. And part of that is to join in with the DECA program, which is a competitive program. We, we wouldn't be looking to do that this year, but we would really like to try to do that next year and get on board. Uh, he had um, Menden so, Upton? Or yeah, he had um, some folks from Menden Upton come and, and talk to kids last um, Thursday. So next Tuesday, there is a, um, I, I don't think it's a competitive event, but it's more of a, like a training event for it. And he does have five students who are going to go with him to that event. And um, I did budget for that event. It, it's free, so I had an account that would cover that. <laughs> um, so it works out. Planning. Yeah. yeah, that was very Poor good planning side. on my side. Um, we're, you know, if, we, if he can build it up bigger and, and we need buses, we did talk to um, Northbridge about partnering up with them. Um, and it turns out Expert doesn't have a DECA program, and they'd like to have one, but I think I, I want us to be better at them with this. So uh, I think so I might. We'll leave them out in the, uh, in the, them out in the outskirts for right now. Sherry's um, not always caring. Yeah. yeah. Um, but one of the things ab about this is that if you, those of us who were around, we originally had talked about um, building sort of a business, a, a true business department, which we at the time we didn't because the business teacher was actually teaching. Um, What's, the, what's the operations? What was that? Was that program that that um, Lynn was teaching? Um, operations. operations management? What was the name? Keyboarding. Of that? Yeah. What was the? <laughs> oh, the. Not, <laughs> not, not operations. When, when I got here. No, the the. Um, Forty words per minute. The typing one, right? Yeah. The Laura. Uh, 
<laughs> what wasn't it called the Lord? It's a name, right? Moving on. Oh yes. <laughs> right. yeah. I'm, moving on. I'm stuck. But anyways, um, she was teaching two sections of operations, something or other. Word processing. Uh, and and so. No. Keep going. She couldn't. She couldn't <laughs> teach okay. the marketing. She couldn't do the finance because she had to teach these uh, the technology classes that were required for graduation. Laura, but now we, we, what we want to do is we really want to build a business program with one person who's already here, but really begin to explore how do we roll out, bring, bring genuinely try to bring business and, and, and finance and marketing to our school for those kids who might want to go into into the field of business who, who presently can't get those types of courses just it's just a restructuring of what we what we did yes maybe speaking maybe it's what beacon maybe speaking maybe speaking no no you're missing the, no <laughs> the course that she uh, anyways well then i don't know well that's what i forget that's it what we'll I go on to, but decker is a piece of that it's it gives, it's comp it's competition around the idea of business there's a lot of programs in the area that are really strong and uh, that was originally part of the plan, but when it came to funding the stipend, the transportation, and so forth, when the budgets were being cut, it went out the window, and we'd like to try to get it back. Um, we had talked a little bit about community food drives. Um, <coughs> as, a, as a group, our, we've talked about it here. Our concern is on weekends and holidays and vacations. Those students with, with, with uh, financial needs and, 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 and uh, food needs can we come up with a program like a number of schools in the area have where each two months out of the year, one of the schools will take on a responsibility of a food drive and then we'll bring the food and we'll keep, keep the food in and we'll do carry bags for the, for the students to take home with them if there's a, you know, a long weekend, if there's a vacation week coming on. Um, a lot of program, a lot of, there's a lot of need for that and there's a lot of very proud people, and we know that there, there are kids that, um, I can tell you that there are administrators sitting over there who have delivered food to, to homes so that the kids have something to eat over a vacation week. Um, maybe we could do something as a, as a school district, and um, we had talked about this, and if we can get that underway this year, that would be, I think, would be a great thing, and then continue to grow it so that there would always be um, some food stocks that we could share with those with need. Um, and then uh, curriculum and grants, now this is something that we had talked a little bit about. Uh, we have a, a, a school district that has uh, no grant writer and has no curriculum director, and, and we would really benefit from it. And one of the things that we had talked a little bit about was um, when people get to be a little bit more senior in age and they are being put out to pasture, sometimes they like to come back and work part-time. Uh, not me, but there's a possibility of somebody who is presently 40. Uh, here, oh. <laughs> who has a tremendous skill set in this area, but can we do something on a, on a, on a part-time basis where there's somebody who, curriculum won't get put into Rubicon unless there's somebody driving the bus. It just won't happen. It's just, there's too many other demands on time. If you, in, in, if, if you get somebody who can drive the bus, that can happen, and someone who can actually find some time to actually look at grants and, and try to do it, rather than the people like Courtney and, and Neely who are trying to do 100 other things, meanwhile trying to write grants at the same time as well. So something to think about uh, down the road as a sort of a little part-time thing with somebody who has a skill set that might be able to help us with that. And then, um, Neely, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about the special education programs and something that we should maybe be looking at or I think that we should actively discuss. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to speak to that. Yeah, um, you know, so a number of districts um, in, in, the, in the meetings that we have across the Blackstone Valley have, have talked about the concept of having students tuition in to different programs across the valley. Now this is of course a conversation we'd have to have with, with Courtney and everybody, but this is just a concept to talk about. Um, so basically different districts hold a level of specialty in different areas. Um, so I know there's one, one, um, one district in the valley that um, has a lot of success with what we call our academic center. So meeting the needs of kids with let's say dyslexia or ADHD or different global types of, of disabilities where we have a reputation for strength with our social emotional populations 
Um, we also have a level of strength with our stripes program and, and you know, affording kids opportunities um, according to interests such as the bad crew with, with the cupcakes and, and things like that. So, you know, there is, there is that idea around people wanting to come to Douglas for special education, which, which is a wonderful thing. Um, but on top of it, you know, can we capitalize? You know, is, is this something to look at? Right. Um, you know, it, it's certainly a big conversation. Um, but my question is, is, is it one that we should start having? I'd say yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd, I'd, yeah, definitely start having the conversation and yeah. see what it would mean, you yeah. know. But I know, you know, we... Sounds we like you have all the right things down here, you know, figure out how, you know, works out with, you know, state compliance and other things sure. and, you know, sure. but not, but... Yeah, I, I think this is something that will resonate with like our board of selectmen. I think they've had this conversation with us around, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. if, if we're offering these services, how do you know? Yeah, yeah. Because we are, yeah. we we have a, a very dynamic skill set, yeah. you know, and and we now have enough years behind us with our social emotional programs that we can see the trends in success for kids. Mm -hmm. We can see that the programs have assisted kids from elementary school through high school at this point. Um, you know, and we also see that a lot of kids are, are coming here. Um, so I think, yeah, you know, if we can right. help. I mean, literally packing up and moving. Literally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's that's Douglas, a thing right now. To take yeah. advantage of the programs, whereas, you know, if, if they could be tuitioned in. Again, there's a lot to think about with this. Yeah, This lot. is just in the burgeoning stages no, of right. discussion. Like, I, yeah, I have no idea, like, I could see it you know, not being able to work out potentially, but I think it's, it's definitely worth But it's worth the conversation. So, yeah. mm -hmm. right. Didn't they do that in Oxford, like the coffee something? Yeah. Project yeah. Coffee became a bigger program. That was more for, for yeah. kids so with behavioral that things. That more, be, yeah, those types of programs become almost like a tier, a step down right from a collaborative almost. Um, so th those are specialized where they all, almost become substantially separate programs away from um, the inclusive setting where we would be, you know, you know, we've we've had success with having these programs to assist the kids, but also keeping kids within the inclusion classrooms for for different classes. So, um, you know, that's the ultimate goal is is to keep the kids with their peers, to keep the kids learning in inclusion. But if they need something supplemental, we can provide that to them. Again, not looking to necessarily expand staffing or anything like that. You know, do you have room for one, maybe two students? Yeah, and, yeah. I think you, you got to balance just, those just, things. Where it, you know, there is a need. I mean, there, there clearly are people reaching out, and clearly, you know, if you're looking at the, uh, the 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 growth that we've seen within these programs over the last number of years, the word is out, and and so, um, you know, perhaps it's time to take a look at it again. You know, between everybody taking a look at it and in, in, in the state regulations and so forth, we might say it's, it's too much of a risk. We don't want to do it, but you won't know unless you explore it if if if, the, if there's some viability to it. So so that was everything that was in that in that packet. It's a lot, but again, um, it's it's all stuff that had been in the previous iterations, except for a couple of things with regards to um, that special education piece, the STEM piece being a change from the digital technology piece, um, but. With all of that, we're talking about the possibility of expanding a 0.6 to a 1.0 for EL. We're talking about a possibility next year of a STEM teacher that will cover pre-K through five, yep. and a science teacher at the high school that would, would, would allow us to offer entry-level courses in animal and plant sciences and a little bit of money for unified sports. But that's a lot of stuff for you know a, a little bit of money, and Ms. Keegan would be quick to tell me where are we going to get the money, and we don't really have the money, and how are we going to make all of this work? That's what we got to try to figure out. But you know that's the commitment, and and again, as I I had the opportunity to speak with Mr. Wojcik recently about that, is that implementing those last pieces puts us in place for the next number of years. I think eventually you'll grow the 
did it again. You'll grow the plant science and the animal science programs to the point where you might need an additional teacher down the road in five or six years, but right now you're not going to be offering, you know, six or seven courses in either of those programs, but you're going to give them the opportunity to explore it and use it. And again, marrying it in with, with special education makes perfect sense. Uh, great opportunity for them to be involved in, 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 in the plant piece of it, uh, as well as even the animal science piece of it, to be honest with you. So that's sort of pie in the sky. I, I, I know that there, is some, there are some realities when it comes to uh, financing and so forth. Um, my feeling is that um, if, if you're willing to submit to the fact that you may get nothing and you may lose, well, that's, that may be, but at least we'll go down fighting. At least we have a plan. Should we get some additional money? I don't think that it's unrealistic. I think that we have to have some kind of goal or some vision that we actually go with instead of just throwing a vision out there and okay that's great we can't because we've been going on a path now where i think we're retaining people a little bit more than in the past right. um people School. are choosing to maybe go back to douglas and give it a shot why do we need to go backwards mm -hmm. we have the ability to move forward right. Well, it'll come down to a conversation, and we'll start these conversations very soon with, with the Finance Committee as well as the Board of, the board of Selectmen, the Town Administrator, and amongst ourselves, which, which we, this, this is a very collaborative group, and we'll continue to work on that type of stuff. So uh, I agree with you, and I, and I think that, that that needs to be, and as I said to, to Brett this morning, I don't mind being the guy out front and, um, and, and pushing it. Uh, you know, at this point, because I believe that it puts Douglas in a really, really solid position for years to come and I think that that was what we talked about three years ago and you know in, even in lean times you know uh, kudos to Ms. Keegan for managing the money well we've been able to add things in in lean times and we have to dig our heels into the ground to support things like this because okay. like I said this is like something we can talk about forever but like unless you actually really do stand your ground about this is the vision and this is where we should be going um, because when it times when it comes time to do the budget we're going to be like, well, not really necessarily. It can be maybe, maybe. No, this is, we have to do this. And, I, and, you know, I think that. We have to take risks is I what I'm I think if saying. you were to ask the faculty uh, across pre-K through 12, they would tell you that they're on board as well. I don't know if these guys want, want to say how they feel about it. But, I mean, I think it, we're driving and we're pushing to be as competitive as all those other schools in the Valley. And let's, let's, let's face it, this, the Valley has a pretty strong reputation right now for academics. And, and I think we've improved our standings as well, and we want to continue to improve. We want to be as competitive as we can. Yeah, I, I you know, I'll state anything new here, but um, I th yeah, you have to have the plan. You have to have the vision. Um, you can't move forward without it. And I think this is tremendous, but we also have to be realistic about how much we can grow. I don't think we can do all of this at once um, in next year's budget, um, just the reality of it. But I think if we try to take one of these a year, we can continue to do that. You know, we, we did STEM this year. That's great. You know, I won't even count the kindergarten because that was like I had to have. The STEM right. was an extension of our services, which, which was good. We've been looking at our services every year for the past th three years now. We can extend one more next year. I think that you know, keep moving us forward. One more the year for that. So for me, it's just it's a matter of prioritizing these right. and figuring out what, you know what you have to do. It sounds like EL might have to happen sooner than later. So maybe that's another one that gets extended this year even. Right. And now you're only trying to do two more, maybe over the next two years. Right. And, but it, you know, to expect but that we're going to be able to do it all at once, it, I think is, is you know, is, is un, probably unreasonable. It'll lead to some frustration. Right. Um, so. Well, and the other piece of it is that. Um, <clears throat> We saw changes in school choice, out school choice, in numbers to the to the to the, to the favorable. Um, fewer students had a, a, a going to Blackstone Valley. Um, those are all positives. In oh, they are good. You, you got to have you got to have something to you know um, get them to, you know, get to reel them in and then get them in the boat. And, yeah. and, and, and um, that's what we're trying to do. And I think that these are these are the next steps that will that will generate a buzz. I think the I think the the animal and plant science piece will generate a buzz in the valley where kids are going to say, listen, I'm going to I'm going to choice to to, to Douglas because yeah. I have an interest in that area, whether it's pre-vet or whether it is you know just in, in horticulture itself. So, um, yeah. anything from the, the admin? Anybody else? Any additional information? I would just say that you know we want to you know I, I think that as we look at the other schools, we need to make sure that we stay 
in a position where we're competitive, where we're able to offer programs so that we're not, those school choice numbers don't slide the other way and yeah. kids start yeah. leaving because, you know, Uxbridge is pretty close and Nipmuc's pretty close. And, mm -hmm. you know, if, if they're offering things that we can't, you know, we risk losing kids. So, you know, it's, it's a little bit of investment now to make sure that we keep, that we, we don't end up going the other way. No, absolutely. Yeah. No, I, I, and, and I guess my point is you, you just got to, you know, think of the idea of sustainability as, as well, which I think I, I didn't add in there was, you know, to be able to add all of these this year and then find that you're cutting two of them next year. Or, you know, I think we, we're always going to be balancing those things. Um, and and well, that's, the reality That's, that's of, the dance that we've been doing for, for yeah, quite a it, period it of time is, balanced, is, so. is, is um, as I said, you know. Um, but I think we've been in a good run here the last three years by kind of being very thoughtful and deliberate about which things we add and not biting off more than we could chew and then having to roll some of those things back. Because I think that can do more harm than good when you roll it out for two years and have to yeah. roll it back. So we've been able to sustain the things we're doing by kind of taking little bites rather than some big bites. So I just. Well, just, in, in that being said, you know, kudos to, to Courtney because she really has taken the lead in this with, yeah. with um, making the commitment. We, you know, she wasn't going to let us backslide. And um, I'm not sure how long she can keep us from backsliding, but as long as we can to continue to, to keep from backsliding, it's, I think it's, it's the best thing for the district. I think it's the best thing for the town. Yeah. No, but I think these sound like all the right things. So yeah. I, I, I don't you know, disagree with you, Josh, with regards to you having to be able to stay competitive here. It's just finding that balance between offering the, the, the right programs and being able to maintain those programs in, in the long term, too. Definitely. But thank you very much for the time to present that. That was the only other thing we had. And uh, if I could extend my appreciation to the admin team for coming out on a, on a bad weather night, but also for advocating for their schools and, and for our students. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I think that completes our superintendent's report, Mr. Main. So with that, we'll move on to our school committee and subcommittee reports. So Lisa, accounts payable. Yeah, accounts payable, please. On October 3rd, 2019, I signed four batches, totaling $72,220.50. And on October 10th, 2019, 13 batches, totaling $212,527.86. And I believe the phone books were in that batch. Yeah, so a, a, quick, a quick update on that. Yes, they have been. Um, Zach Perkins has been a man in a, uh, a room by himself for quite a period of time, but he's gotten them all processed. They've got them out, I think it was uh, today or yesterday that, that they both days, yesterday, yeah, that got to get them out. I don't know how they got them done, but now <laughs> the next thing is to, is to um, spruce up the fours, get those down to the elementary school, spruce up the twos, get them down to the primary school. It, it, it sort of reminds me of being the, the third child and third, third <laughs> son in a row. Uh, those, will, those will be yours soon. <laughs> okay, so yes, that they are out and about. Awesome. Great, um, just the next one is negotiation subcommittee. Just we, we had our first um, negotiation subcommittee meeting last week, um, which primary was just, um, you know, introducing the town man, uh, administrator, Matt Wojcik, as you know, he'll be joining us and mostly um, Courtney and Kevin kind of giving me and Kelly an overview of what negotiations typically go like. We have, we have our, our teacher's contract, uh, custodial and, and uh, cafeteria workers, all contracts all up this year that we'll be negotiating. So it was really kind of getting our feet wet in the process initially. So just wanted to let you know that we have had our first meeting and we will be kind of moving forward and reporting back to you guys on a regular basis. Most of the time we'll be reporting back to you during executive session just on the, on the details of negotiations. Right. We did receive um, a copy of the ground rules from Greg Pagnini um, the other day. So, um, and I did have opportunity uh, on another matter to speak with Mr. Reardon, who's the president of the DTA. And um, we will have our first meeting with the DTA leadership team next Thursday. And one of the things that we're going to do is, is take a look at calendars. So. Um, I'll be reaching out before that meeting to see what kind of dates might work for, for everybody. And if we can, in fact, do them in the afternoons and, and, and so forth, all the power to us and we'll get them arranged and, and um, uh, try to work with everybody's schedule. So, but we will be looking to try to maybe get will together. You Kelly and I for next Thursday? Um, no, though, that's yeah, just the, that's that's the meeting that yeah. Neil okay. and I have with the DTA leadership team. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Any questions, comments on that? Um, next up is our consent agenda, just two items there. We have our October 2nd meeting minutes. 
did have a chance to go through these in pretty good detail. I didn't see any issues. Anyone else have any issues? Um, on page three, okay. I don't know what that was. She hopes to have her one-page summary of encumbrances. I tend to 16, 19. I don't know what that is. Uh, what, it is where like are we? Uh, 19 or 20 or 26 pages. Top of, of the page? Other topics. I'm sorry, right in the middle, other topics. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I don't know what that is. So if you just strike that whole sentence, because <laughs> I don't even know. Yeah. Okay, so that's on page three. So everything that's know, you know what? I knew I was going to have the transfers for you, the whole bunch of transfers for you this evening. Which I just, just, that, just, just the last sentence. Of it. Yeah. yeah, the sentence Ms. Keegan stated she that she will be dumping. No, no, not, not that bad. She hopes to have her one page summary of incompetence. Oh, just the last sentence. I'm yeah, just sentence. that one there. All right. So we'll have that yeah. line stricken. Struck. Struck. From the, uh, minutes. Taken out. Okay. <laughs> Taken out. Removed. <laughs> immediately. Uh, okay. Um, all right. Anything else? Okay, if not, I'll be looking for a motion to um, approve the October 2nd, 2019 school committee meeting minutes as amended. So moved. We have a motion from Becky. Second. And a second from Kelly. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? Seeing none. They are approved. Okay, and then we have DHS out of state soccer practice. Mr. Romano has some information for us. The um, soccer teams are looking to do a practice. Um, of course, I forgot my notes. So it is at a facility in Rhode Island. Um, they've used this place before. They didn't have a specific date yet. They were um, indoor. Wide world sports. Sure. Yeah, that's what it is. It's a wide, wide world sports. Um, they don't have a particular day yet, but they're looking to do one each for the boys and the girls, and they're looking for like a TBD permission, basically. Okay. So, so one they, each. They, okay. is, is it turf? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, because uh, when they get to the tournament play, they will. They, they play on they, turf a lot, and they want to get the boys or the girls. Both. Both of them. Okay. Yep. And so um, the boys' record is. Did they win today? I don't know. I don't know. I haven't heard yet. I didn't hear anything. I think I did see that they won. Okay, so they they're probably like five. So they have. I think they just have to do one more to win. Five, two, and seven. Seven. They, yeah, five, two, of ties, but I that's okay. That, yeah, they'll end up there. They're going to set a gonna league record for ties. Qualified as well. So I think the girls already qualified. Yeah. 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 Okay, so we're looking for a motion uh, to approve um, our varsity and JV, or just varsity. You know, I would let's cover both because okay. I think so they just bring our the whole varsity and JV teams to be able to practice. Have practice, hold practices in hold a single practice each in Rhode Island <laughs> at some point in the next date six to weeks? be determined. Yeah, um, yes, closer within, than that, probably yeah, the next four weeks. Okay. So moved. Okay, we have a motion from Lisa. Second. Second from Becky. Any other questions, concerns, discussion on the matter? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstained? Seeing none. Thank you so much. If you, Josh, if you could just share us with us the date, I will share it with the okay, committee so yep. they know when it's once, going once to be. Once they nail it down. I will Thank you. So we have it. Thank you. Um, so that covers our consent agenda. We now move on to Ms. Keegan's report. Hey, first I have for you um, transfers. Um, as I did say for this meeting, um, I would be doing some transfers throughout the budget. Um, to be honest with you, I haven't done them all. So this is just a, a good chunk of them, and then I have to, I'm waiting for Jean to post them, and then I'll be doing another review of the um, budget and go from there. Basically, um, some of them are from administrators as far as they're requesting, but the rest of them are just doing my usual fall spring cleaning of the budget, I guess you could call it. <laughs> so this is for FY20. So, um, yes, for FY20 general one. fund. Okay. Mm -hmm. So nothing really, you know, just a typical moving money around. Because as you know, we budget just, you know, um, for you, particularly Becky. So we, we actually prepare, like, say the salary budget. I'm doing that in January, February, the whole prior year. And then, you know, for special ed sometimes, too, they'll move, um, students will move, so, or people move around, different salaries, different changes. So, yeah, it's, it's a lot with the salary budget as well. And sometimes if you have new hires or, or there are vacancies and, you know, the salary could be different, so you're moving money around as well. So from vacancy savings to cover something else that sometimes we have difficulty finding someone or, or sometimes um, they have years of experience so they'll put on, be put on a different part of the grid, which is perfectly appropriate. Um, just things of that nature. Nothing, nothing um, out of the ordinary. Does anybody have any questions? 
Okay. So if not, I'll be looking for a motion to um, accept the <coughs> FY2020 budgetary transfer request number one for school committee meeting October 16, 2019. So moved. Okay. Motion from Becky. Second. Second from Lisa. Any other discussion? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstained? Seeing none. Okay. Uh, a couple reclasses? Yes, I have three reclasses. Um, reclassifications number one as well, and these are all um, payroll. One was um, had to be moved from the FY19, the bottom, one the bottom 262 grant to the FY20, okay. and the other one was um, it was the account. Okay. From two to wages to therapist wages. Okay. Any questions? Get that cleaned up. Now we're looking for. Motion to approve the FY 2020 reclassifications number one for school committee meeting October 16th, 2019. So moved. We have a motion from Kelly. Second. Second from Lisa. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstained? Seeing none. Okay. Okay, now next I'm going to just go through the, um, this is the DESE um, end of the year pupil and financial report. So I did get this done. I'm so happy. So I'll just run through it with you. So this is un unaudited, and the DESE always issues to the auditors an audit compliance guideline, and they won't get that until December, so then they'll do the audit then. And, um, and there are a few interesting things at the end that I will uh, bring to your attention. So I'm just going to run through the various components of it basically right now. Uh, I'm not going to go through the numbers because we would be here until, um, what's today? Yeah. Wednesday. It's Wednesday, probably so. Saturday. Next Wednesday. So yeah, because <laughs> you guys are really bored. <laughs> um, so page one, just real quick, um, and they have a little bit of a formatting thing here with grants, and they talked to the state about. Hopefully, they'll move it to the second page, like it should be. So it kind of looks kind of messy, but um, just basically, uh, first page we have Medicare, and so, so that's the Medicaid. Um, revenue there then we have other revenues so there's a little bit of miscellaneous revenues that do apply for the school department that's posted on there um, you'll see the bottom of page one and two you have revenue from federal state grants and all other receipts revolving funds and everything that we have to record so that's pages one and two then we have schedule one and schedule one is basically just putting in um, the way DESE wants it actually recorded all of the um, school department expenditures. It's not only the general fund, but if you go down to pages beginning, so page, um, this is schedule one, page two of 20, but if you go to schedule one, pages 18 of 20, so that's all the general fund, then you'll start seeing your federal and state grants and revolving funds. So they have to break every, we have to break everything out by what they call the function codes. Okay. Um, and I'll get to that in a, in a minute. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Okay. So beginning, um, then you'll have schedule three. That's pages one of 11. You'll see a little bit ways down. I'll wait till you find that. This is probably where people kind of spend a little bit more time. So basically schedule three are your instructional expenditures. So, and it goes down to the 2800 function code, which is um, for um, psychological. So everything that's, is, that's instructional um, will be in schedule <coughs> three. Okay. And there's also an additional separate school report that's not included right here that you can actually print out. It prints out on, on big paper, district-wide, and then each one of the four schools. It actually breaks it up, but they all roll up into the schedule three. This is all of the schools and district-wide expenditures. And after that is my most favorite, favorite report to do. And that is Schedule 4, and it's only one page. It's a tiny little schedule, but it takes more time to do this tiny little schedule than the whole rest of this report that you see in front of you. But it's basically breaking out um, special education expenditures by placement. Um, it's very funky. I had to create all these different Excel spreadsheets to come into this, this here. But this shows you um, the total expenditures for special ed. And it does include grants and revolving funds. You'll see that's just put in one line, it, um, line uh, 3930 down towards the bottom. So it kind of encapsulates special ed um, throughout the district, all funding sources. Okay. And Is transportation included in any of this? Not, not, in not, not here, no. 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 Oh. Transportation, it also doesn't count as, um, as, um, 
Yeah. You know, he doesn't even meet net school spending or anything transportation. It's yeah. just supposed to be provided by the town. And, you know, yeah. but yeah. Um, so the next schedule is <laughs> Schedule 7 for transportation. So this was, um, we are still required to prepare this. This actually came about many, many decades ago because believe it or not, municipalities used to get reimbursement from the state for transportation. But it stopped at least 30 years ago, but they still require us to, to complete the schedule. So the top part is irregular ed and homeless, and then the bottom part is special ed having to be broken out into categories. And the next page is just um, folk schools and also very miscellaneous um, for field trips. So after that is schedule 19. And those are, um, that's our annual budget that we have to provide for the, because this end of the year report is for FY19, this is our FY20 budget. Just ba basically summarize. So that $15,147,974 is our appropriation. So the next one after that is, oh, so the next one after that is Schedule 19 for the um, estimated expenditures by city and town. And I'm sorry, I skipped the page in Schedule 1 where we do also have to, because a lot of them does count for um, net school spending, some do, some don't, from the town. In other words, it's appropriate on the town side of the budget. That would be um, the, the treasurer's time, uh, town accountant's time, um, John Furno for plowing sanding, um, health insurance that's attributable to all school department employees, um, our portion of Worcester Regional Retirement that's attributable to all um, school department employees of the town pays. The town does not pay anything for MTRS, just so you know, that's statewide. There's not a dime of town. Our revenues goes towards MTRS. That's all funded by the state. There's no matching part. Um, so that's on Schedule 19. This is their estimated for FY20, but back in Schedule 1, there was also what they actual sp actually spent in FY19 that we have to account for as well. The next page, um, Schedule 19, is estimated revenues for the general fund. It's, that's just 30000 That's just what they estimate. Um, for Medicaid, they estimate extremely conservatively, which is very well. I mean, very good. They do that. Then after that, you'll just see some expenditure summaries. Um, you can look at that when you uh, want to uh, review that. So I just want to call your attention to reports, page one of eight. This is on the net school spending calculation for FY19. I wish they would actually put a calculation down there. I don't know why they do of how much you're over or under. Yeah. You actually have to manually do that, and I have to put a, a tape on here. So you've done that? But, yeah, well, I did it in my office, but I didn't put it on here. Okay. But, yeah, so we're, we are, yeah, but you can clearly see that line 15 net school spending, that's what our net school spending was, and the required net school spending. So we're not, you know, keep in mind that statewide, typically you will see, in fact, I do have that print out in my office, that so. typically districts <clears throat> are, a, you know, a good percent beyond the required. The because if anybody just stayed beyond. right at net school spending, you would not have a school district. We would have a huge problem with school choice out, mm -hmm. <laughs> BVD and everything else. So I'm just calling that to your attention. There are a few new, um, then they had the budgeted one for net school spending, but that certainly can change. That's just budgeted, so I wouldn't pay too, too much attention to that. Then the only other thing um, to draw your attention to that's brand new is that on reports pages eight of eight, the very end, so it's reports page eight of eight, So they do have one new schedule that was incorporated in the end of, end of the year report last year, it's Schedule 19. They actually asked in, for information on um, teacher salaries, just you know, so they kind of, you know, they're, get, they're gathering information so that we'll have at least some information there. Um, I don't know really how helpful it is right now because there's a lot, as Gina and I will always say, the story behind the numbers. Um, but they do have that there. Then the next one down, E, Title I Maintenance of Effort. Um, we're required to meet a maintenance of effort. So there's this big calculation that we used to have to do separately manually, but now they've incorporated it in the end of the year report. So, um, and then they tell you if it's less than 90%, then M M MOE is not met. Well, we're at 94.78%, so I'm very happy that that has been met. Um, the IDEA, which is a special ed grant maintenance, maintenance of effort, um, that's at 99.36%, is less, less than 100% um, of FY18. MOE is um, not met. So what you do in a, in a situation like that, because we actually, when we applied for a grants, we have to do the same thing, and Neely and I actually had to do this. It's not a big deal. You know, we figured it out immediately is 
this is only by numbers, but if you can explain, which you always can. So say, for instance, you have one or two students that were in a large um, tuition out school, and then they drop off the budget next year. Well, you just, you just provide that explanation, and you're absolutely fine. So I'm going to ask a question on this, mm -hmm. I'm misunderstanding it. FY19 is actually higher than FY18. Wouldn't that be 100 and something percent rather than 94%? No, that, th th this, these are the actual um, percent of 19 of 18. This is how they calculate it. So what they're saying here is FY19 is less than 100% of 18. But MOE is not met. It's just the way, we have nothing to do with it. It's just the way they calculate it. It's just the way it's done. They have their own. They calculate this? Yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just. Because they're doing it backwards. So, to be honest with you, um, I really don't know. I'm only bringing this to your attention because it's brand new that's being brought into this. It's always been required. The, and there's another one, too. Um, there's also one called excess costs. That's another brand new one that they threw into the grants just this year without giving us a heads up. They also, um, it's not in here because you can't even print it out. I was required to spend, I spent days having to divide out all of our special ed expenditures into grade categories. So um, anyway, it, it worked out fine. That's what you need to know for now. <laughs> Don't ask me. Okay, okay, it worked out fine. Okay. But it is something that they're they're all of a sudden um, throwing these things in here and into grants. We had no heads up about the one. I mean, well, we did. What was it? A few weeks or something? Not not really a heads up because you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we worked together right away. I mean, she nearly called me. I, I said, don't worry about it. I'll be right over. So we did, we, you know, we did a spreadsheet. We looked at everything together. And we, we called them up and said, yep, we can explain it. And we were absolutely fine. So Appreciate that. Thank you. Sure panic, but we, we worked together, and it worked out fine in the end. So this is unaudited. I'll let you know, you know when the audit's done, and um, you'll get a copy of the audit. Okay. Um, but I wanted to get you a copy of that. And you know, if you're really bored at night and can't sleep, mm -hmm. It's some great reading material. But do you have any other questions about it before I move on to the next thing, which will be really quick? No. Okay. So the only other thing that I have for you this evening is I did prepare, um, as I said I would, for the FY20 budget, the additional school committee approved budget items. And basically it just has um, the date that they were approved. And I italicized the first two because the, the, actually your vote was taken on 515, but it was for application to the FY20 budget. So, um, and I have them in the categories of school choice, circuit breaker, and general fund. Um, just kind of a running tally, um, just for us to look. And I did definitely uh, make a note of the ones that were reinstated. Mm -hmm. So they're not brand new. We didn't just come up with these positions. They were there before. Um, and that would be the nurse, the secretarial clerk, and the department head stipends for the high school. And those are the ones that mm -hmm. you appropriated in, the, uh, in August. Mm-hmm. So I just, just, and I'll be, you know, just bringing this every so often, just because it's good to have a tally because you, you can't remember all these things, you know, it's, they're all separate meetings. So this encapsulates everything for the year. So at the bottom numbers are, yeah. are the expected balance at the end of the year. Um, well, right. that is okay. So for, I'm for bringing school choice forward. And circuit breaker, yeah. Well, I'm bringing forward. That's a good question. Thank you for asking, Brett. For, so for school choice and circuit breaker, <coughs> that is our brought forward fund balance. Yep. Okay, after reconciliation and everything for both of those accounts. Um, so then we included in, in the approved budget estimated budgeted revenues and yep. estimated budgeted expenditures. So uh, it's, it's yes, as close as we can yeah, do for exactly. now. Yeah. Yep. No, it's, yeah. yeah. In general fund, I don't put anything like that up there. I'm just showing you because we have yeah. a bottom line appropriation and it's, <coughs> it kind of works differently. That's a whole different ball of wax. That's but. not including the 30000 for the... Point six. Um, no, it is. Teacher. It's just, oh, we could, thank you for asking. When I italicize something, that means that it hasn't taken place yet. Right. So any documents, they're either projected or, but we did vote on that, but we haven't been hired. I don't know if you want to talk a little bit more yeah, about that, so Ms. Yeah, so I mean, we just haven't been able to hire anybody. Mm -hmm. Nobody has an interest at the point six. There's, like I said, there's been one applicant not even certified. So um, I should, while I'm thinking of that, um, we were also have been looking at the primary school for a point five ABA, ABA which also... We've had absolutely no luck with uh, no applications, no no certified mm -hmm. candidates. Mm -hmm. Again, because it's part time. Uh, for preschool. Yeah, that's the yeah, um, for the pre K. Yes. Pre K. Yeah. Preschool. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, one of the things the the STEM uh, special education teacher at the uh, for the high school that was the one that we in which we we reduced by three paras mm -hmm. to bring in a Perfect. teacher. If you recall that 
was part of the process along the way as well. Thank you. So I'm all, yep, I'm all set. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Keegan. All this stuff, good. Thank you. Okay. Um, topics not anticipated. Well, I was going to, um, well, it's late, so I'm not going to, but um, Warren put together the student life video. One of the things that you had been talking about was, can we put something on the, on the website that shows <coughs> what the experience is at, at the school? And then she's working now on um, sort of a calendar, uh, much like you had talked about where, you know, what yeah. goes on by the month and so forth, and, and trying to put that together and, and, and so forth. And I've asked the, uh, uh, the, the principals to send it in, so she's gotten a lot of information. Well, anyways, there's a video for student life that I will bring back in in two weeks, and we'll we'll show it at that point um, with a little bit of um, it's just just photos, it's just PowerPoint, but of all all the different grade levels and all the different so a lot of the different activities that are taking place with some background music and so forth. Uh, I've done it at the high school in previous years, <clears throat> but it's nice to put it on the website on the district website that you know that somebody can click and what's it look you know what's it look like to go to to school in Douglas and so forth. Um, because it is quarter of nine, I'll hold off. It's 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 like seven or eight minutes long, Thank so you. we can. Okay. I'll, I'll, she'll refine it a little bit, and we'll bring back an even better version in two weeks. Awesome. Um, probably I don't know if it's not anticipated, but I was watching the finance committee meeting, their last finance committee meeting, which was last Tuesday. Um, and at the end of the meeting, they brought up that they would like to kind of get ahead of the budget process, starting with us. Um, so they would like to see us on December eighth. I think whatever their first meeting in December was. Um, so that could be all of us. It could be our budget subcommittee. You know, we have, we have to figure out who, you know, who we want to send up there um, and what um, we're going to talk about. So I'm going to reach out to Howard. Howard's now the, the chair. Howard D'Amico is the chair of the finance committee. So I'll reach out to him to figure out um, specifically what they're, they're looking for from us. Um, I, I think we have a rough idea, but I'd rather, you know, get it explicitly from him. Um, so they've, they're already thinking about the budget process, which I, I think is a good thing. Um, they had a walkthrough of, of um, Matt's planning document, his five-year planning document that, that he uses um, during their last meeting, um, and then immediately kind of following that, you know, Howard just brought up, yeah, let's let's start talking to folks, and you know, us being kind of top of his mind. So, um, so just expect that on top of our, our regular meeting schedule for those who can join us then. Um, would you want to do? Well, that, we've got time to plan that, but we yeah. do some budget subcommittee meetings. Yeah, before. we'll definitely want a budget subcommittee be before then. Um, okay, so. And um, the other thing that, that I came upon is unanticipated, uh, received in, from the school committee um, association. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody is planning on attending Thank the you for bringing that up. Yeah. conference okay. down at the, um, the Cape, which is November um, 6th through the 9th. So it's yeah. a couple of weeks away. Yeah, so I made up a part of the conference last year. Um, that's actually when my, my elderly pooch started having, having his issues, and that's why I'm not attending this year, because I, I can't really be too far from him at this point, unfortunately. Every, every time I leave the house, it seems like something happens to him. So, um, but I think it is worthwhile. Um, you know, the, we, we've, we've got a budget to, to pay well, for so. us. So um, if anyone's interested, you know, it's a four-day four conference, but there's, there's options to sign up for only one or two days of it. Um, if you can get to any part of it, I, I think it's worth it. Um, um, worst case scenario, if it works with that, with with my schedule and so forth, I can always report back. Oh, you're, yeah, you are, you are going to be there. I, this I year. might go. I haven't, okay. I haven't looked at the schedule. I just I had it on my docket from the summertime, and I must have misplaced the post it. Never, yeah. never went back to look at it. So it is interesting. You know, it's a typical conference. There's, there's yeah. some keynote stuff where everyone's yeah. in one room, and there's a whole bunch of breakout sessions, and you'll have you know you'll be able to choose from you know four different topics during any right. any given session. Um, you know, last year I attended topics on, you know, stuff that was, you know, kind of top of mind. There was one on vaping that I hit. There was, you know, some budget ones that I hit. There was the role of the chair. This, this pretty much something for everyone, you know, there. And so you get a chance to talk to other school committee members and other districts that may be having similar issues. Um, or actually, I, I ended up at dinner with a, a bunch of folks from Cambridge, and they were just fascinated with Douglas, you know, <laughs> and the issues that we have, you know, like. Really, why wouldn't they? <laughs> exactly. Why they wouldn't really they? were. It was like four of them, and they were just like, you don't have to deal with all that? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, that's, that's, that's small town Massachusetts right there, you know, so. But anyway. But they are, they are a great opportunity. We did bu yeah. budget money yeah. um, because we want people to have, especially particularly new members, to have the opportunity yeah. to attend. So.
So I, I'm looking at it as a possibility. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't know what's on the docket really. That yeah. And I should might. even just look at even if I can get down there for a day. Um, I'll have to see if that, that's possible. If I do, I, I'm happy to report back out. Thank you. That works as well. Okay. So I know a lot um, of people. I, I haven't I haven't gone the last two years, but I know that. A lot of the gentlemen and, 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 and ladies that I talk with that have gone say there is some benefit to going there and so forth, and there's some good takes and so forth. So, yeah, I, d I definitely got some got something out of it last year, which was good. So. Um, and while we're on top, okay, I think charting the course, uh, I just don't want us to lose track of that for you. Right. Um, so I don't know when the next one is, but we should we should keep track of that. Okay. So. Okay. By the way, I found out that the um, the Douglas High School boys did win. Congratulations, and boys. And they just have to tie or win. Against Sutton on oh. Saturday, uh, which they tied last time, so it is possible. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you got to tie it. Take a tie. Yeah, that's our, that's our strong suit. Yes. Seven ties? That's all Okay. <laughs> um, with that, we will need a brief executive session this evening. Um, so we will not return. Okay, so we'll enter its executive session to discuss the strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation of any open, um, oh, if an open meeting may have detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the government body or to collect collective bargaining. Um, we will not return from executive se session except for the purpose of adjourning our open session. Um, so I'm looking for a motion to go to executive session. Roll call. No, no, I think I actually should get him. I think we've been doing it wrong all the whole time, so I'm going to try to do it right, right this I'll time. I'll make a so. motion that we move to executive session. All right, we have a motion from Kelly. Second. A second from Lisa, and now we'll get a roll call vote to Thank approve you. the motion. Becky <laughs> Cherniak, aye. Julian Mulroy. Brett Argyle, aye. Kelly Grady, aye. Lisa Brown, aye. Okay, we are in executive session. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>